Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic pop-out photo effect, also known as the out-of-bounds effect in Photoshop. You can download the project files for this tutorial to see how everything was put together and have a photo to work with if you don't have one of your own. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is duplicate our background layer. So you can either right click and choose duplicate layer or just press Ctrl J. Next I'm going to come up and click layer, vector mask, reveal all. And that's going to add a vector mask to my new layer. Next I'm going to come over here and choose the rectangle tool. And up in the rectangle tool options I'm going to make sure that path is set. Then I'm going to select my vector mask. And I'm going to draw a rectangle on my image that's going to represent the piece of paper in our pop-out effect. So I want the pop-out to be just the top part of the car right above the tires, so that looks pretty good. And you'll notice that you can't see any changes right away, but if I hide this background layer, you'll see that now we have a vector mask showing just that part of our image. I'm going to turn that background layer back on, and then I'm going to double click our top layer here. And I'm going to add a stroke layer style, so I'm going to set that to about 25 pixels and the position to inside with the color white. And then I'm also going to set inner glow and change the blend mode to linear burn at about 50%. I'm going to leave the size at about 60 pixels and increase the range a bit to round out the inner glow corners. And then I'm going to hit OK. Next I'm going to press A to choose the direct selection tool and click on my vector mask. And I'm going to take this top left corner and click and hold, and while I hold shift as well, I'm going to drag that to the right. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my top right corner, but bring it into the left a little bit. And that's going to add some perspective to our photo effect. Next I'm going to press P to choose the pen tool, and I'm going to highlight over this line here, and I'm going to click to add a new point to my layer mask. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here in the middle at the bottom. Then I'm going to press A to choose the direct selection tool again and select those two points that I just created by holding shift and clicking each of them. And I'm just going to drag those down a bit to give our photo effect rounded corners. Next I'm going to drag out a guide using my rulers and if you can't see your rulers just press Ctrl R to show those. And I'm going to drag that down just so it's on the inside of my stroke here. And that will give us reference for what we need to trace out in our pop-up effect. So now we're ready to cut out our car and make it look like it's popping out of this photo frame. So I'm going to hide that layer for now. And I'm going to duplicate this background again and move it to the top in my layers palette. Then I'm going to come up and click layer, vector mask, reveal all. And then I'm going to press P to select the pen tool and make sure that I have path set in the pen tool options. And then I'm going to zoom in here and select my vector mask in the layers palette. And then I'm going to start tracing my object for the area that's going to pop out. So I'm going to start just under my guideline and just start tracing around the image that I want to pop out. So now I've made my selection and if I hide the background layer you can see just what I've cut out. You don't have to be very specific with the area that you draw below the guide that we made earlier because none of that is going to be popping out of the image. Now the other thing that you'll notice is that there's some empty areas in here that we need to trace out as well. So all you need to do is use your pen tool and make sure you have auto add delete selected up here. And zoom in and draw in those shapes and Photoshop will automatically remove those from your selection. Now there's some other areas in our image that I could cut out but for the tutorial's sake I'm just going to cut out this back area so you can see how it works. Now if I turn this other layer back on, you'll see our effect is starting to take shape. So I'm going to hide our guide now. And there's a few things that I need to fix, like this tire sticking out right here. So I'm going to choose the vector mask of our bottom layer here. And using the direct selection tool, I'm going to click, drag, and highlight these endpoints. And just pull them out to the right a little bit. And then over here on the left, I'm going to do the same, just to make it a little more symmetrical. Next, I'm going to come down to the Layers palette and choose New Solid Color Fill Layer. And I'm going to make that kind of a lightish tan color. And hit OK. And I'm going to make sure that's below all my other layers. And then I'm going to come over to my Rectangle tool again and make sure I have Shape selected instead of Path in the options up here. Then just above my background layer, I'm going to draw a black rectangle that's the same width as our picture. 
Then I'm going to choose the Direct Selection tool again. And I'm going to drag the top right corner all the way up here to the right to make sure it's the same perspective as the image above. And then I'm going to do the same thing here with the top left corner. And then using the pen tool again, I'm going to click in the middle of the bottom here to add a new point. And I'm going to drag that up just a bit to make that shape a little bit curved. And this is going to be our shadow, and I want this middle point to kind of line up with the bottom of the image above it. So I'm going to select all three of these bottom points here. And I'm going to drag them up just so that middle one is barely touching the edge of that white border. Now I'm going to right click that layer and convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and give it a blur of about 12 pixels and hit OK. Then I'm just going to set the opacity to about 50% in the Layers palette. And that's pretty much it. This effect is great to add some interest to action photos or to give some life to an otherwise boring image. And you can do all kinds of cool stuff at the background, and since everything is cut out, you can move this and put it into any kind of document. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.